بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام وشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين نبينا محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم Dear brothers and sisters, welcome to Youth Hour. Uh, my name is Ishaq, and our topic today is Ramadan and youth. And Alhamdulillah, in our show today, we have two special guests, young brothers, mashallah. In my far right, actually, brother uh, Abdullah Louis Tyler. Mm -hmm. Welcome to our show. No problem. Thank you very much for inviting me today. And then we have Zakaria Rob. Welcome to our show, my brother. for inviting me today. Mashallah. So today, we're going to talk about uh, Ramadan and youth, inshallah. So, Brother Lewis, <coughs> I'll start with you. Okay. Um, mashallah, we are so happy that you actually uh, became Muslim. Alhamdulillah. Mashallah, that's a beautiful thing to have. Mm. I'm so honored to, you know, you come to my show, actually. So, if you could start with your journey to Islam, and then, inshallah, I'll we'll go to Zakaria regarding his education and everything else. So, could okay. you please tell our viewers your journey to Islam, inshallah. <coughs> Bismillah, alhamdulillah. Um, all praise is due to Allah. Um, my, my journey to Islam was quite unique actually. Um, I was studying at university. Um, I was quite isolated. I was, I was studying in the University of Bedfordshire, um, studying sport and science. Um, but one day I found a book and I read this book and it had some details in it, some knowledge that no man could know. Subhanallah. Subhanallah. And then I read this book, and then the question that came to my mind was, where did this, where did it come from? And then I did research about this book, and then I revised it more and more and more, and I tried to challenge the book. So, what, what kind of information did you read and thought men wouldn't know mm. on that time? So, what kind of information were there? For example, so I was studying um, sports science. <laughs> um, my topics was things like, um, you know, the universe and things like this and how it relates to phenomenon and stuff. So when I saw a verse in the Quran um, talking about how the universe is constantly expanding, so uh, this is something that kind of blew my mind because I knew that this was quite a, uh, a fact which just came into, you know, the science field quite, quite recently and no one could have known, you know, 1,400 years ago. Um, so what I did is I took the challenge to try and see if this book, this Qur'an, you know, well, where did it come from? How could this book have such knowledge and who delivered it? You know? Allah so I, I, t I took on quite a, a long journey. Um, Allahu Alam, I think maybe a year, something like this, um, trying to negate the Qur'an, trying to, you know, throw off all the, the bad dogmas about the Qur'an, you know, mm. all of these false claims. And as soon as you, you scrape all the dust off of it and you really get down to the truth of the Qur'an, and you know, where it comes from, you know, Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu you can't deny it. Subhanallah. Did you get help from any Muslim? You had a lot of, I'm sure you had friends, Muslim friends in your class, in mm -hmm. your, you know, activities and stuff like that. Did you ask them? Did they, did they have any answers for that? No. This is, this is, this is the, one of the things which when I look back at my journey into Islam is quite, one of the key things is that I had so many interactions with Muslims, Muslim friends in school, you know, university, uh, football teams I used to play in, all of these things, social gatherings. I knew so many Muslims. But no, no, one, no one told me about Islam. No one of them. Now you're, uh, mashallah, you've been Muslim for a long time now. Mm. Well, well um, now you're actually training Muslims to mm. do how to dawah to non Muslims. Mm. It's amazing. Um, why do you think now, uh, I'm coming to you no, in a minute, mm. why do you think now that people didn't said anything about Islam to you? Why do you think it's the case? Is that because of confidence? Because they don't know their deen? Is that because...? It, it's a mix of... It's, it's, it's a bag of effort, really. I think the main thing is... Uh, I think when you, when, you, when you observe the Muslim youth today, I think the main thing is having sincere certainty in the knowledge of Islam. And, for example, if, you, you know, if, you, if, I, if I approached uh, one of the, the youth today, I'm sure if you take a percentage of those, they, they wouldn't be able to tell me Islam. Uh, when, if, if the youth are supposed to be the generation is supposed to take our footsteps when we pass, then how are they going to fulfill the obligation which is to you know, tell people about Islam? And the thing is, if every single Muslim did this obligation, 
had the knowledge, had the training, all of these things which the Muslim community should be providing, what, what, what impact could it have on the West, especially the West, like London, for example? It's, it's, it's a big question, isn't it? But Zachariah, yeah. you are a, a medical student. Yes. Um, tell me about your education first, what you want to do and um, what's your so goal, goal of life? Like you said, um, I'm studying at Queen Mary University in my third year at the moment. So I've got a few more years, uh, few more years to go. But um, other than that, I've had the opportunity to get involved in some of the like, kind of projects uh, within the Islamic society and outside of that. So one's called Rock, hopefully um, I'll talk about it a little bit more later on and other kind of charity. Week. Not rock and roll, no? Yeah, so this is, it stands for reconnecting our community through kindness. Bit of a long one, that's why it's, it's, it's nice shortened memory. into rock and then charity week and other projects that really kind of, whilst I'm studying, even though people say, you know, it's very time consuming, you do still have a lot of time and utilizing that time in terms of trying to benefit other people. So. I've just found myself getting involved in these types of things. Mm -hmm. So what kind of stuff you do in universities? Because there are a lot of, uh, um, I'm assuming lots of young people are studying in, in yeah. medics and all that stuff. So what kind of stuff you guys do with Islamic society? Yeah, so in terms of, there's so many societies within, within the university, obviously people have different interests and things like that. And one of them being the Islamic society. And so what the Islamic society's goal is really in term, other than just practicing our faith, is actually doing it in a practical, practical manner. So how can we do it so then we, we're maybe doing good deeds in terms of feeding the homeless in the local area, wow. things like that. So you, could, you know, Queen Mary's in Whitechapel, the area itself has a lot of issues with poverty and economic kind of uh, differences and, and so on. So that, obviously we're from a medical background, so we know within the Asian community there are many health problems as well. So how can we kind of impart our knowledge within the local community? Can we visit mus masjids and maybe give a talk or a workshop or something of that, of that kind of nature, basically? MashaAllah, may Allah bless you, man. It's amazing, young no, people no. actually doing a study and also, of course, especially mm -hmm. when you do medics, there's a lot of, uh, lots of things to write, lots of things to study. And then also, you know, feeding the homeless is amazing. This is, this is amazing. I mean, th he was talking about stuff like this. If you've mm -hmm. seen it before, you'd be very exactly. proud. I mean. And, I don't know in your day if we had these uh, young people are going now, uh, also proud of their identity and doing this kind of stuff. I would like to have viewers, dear brothers and sisters, uh, wherever you're watching us from, please get your young people in front of the TV and get them to, probably they might learn something from those two young men, actually they're doing amazing stuff. Mm -hmm. Louis, mashallah, he became Muslim a few years back and alhamdulillah, this is amazing. He actually uh, um, not just became Muslim, he actually became Muslim and training Muslims to become a better Muslim. That's amazing. That is a beautiful thing. Right. Um, Lewis, you touched on something like you read a book and you thought that no man would know in that time mm -hmm. about those uh, um, knowledge. Mm -hmm. That's what you've you, you yeah. done the research. Your uh, expectation from Muslim community who has this book, SubhanAllah, mm. and w when you look at us, it doesn't match, does it? The thing is today, I think that there's, there's been a big disconnection between, um, uh, especially within the Muslim youth, their, their identity. There's an identity crisis. It is. You know, the, the, the push they, They're almost like frightened to say who they are. Yeah. This, this is the thing. And I think, uh, you know, the Quran is supposed to be a manual, a book that's supposed to guide your life, right? Because it's the word of Allah. Now, if the people are not reading it, that's one thing or not revising it, studying it, spending time, even if it's a small amount of time in a day towards it, how do you expect the output of the person to be, to marry up to the book? This is it. This is it. And the so question that you ask a, a, an average Muslim uh, today, especially in the West, how much time you spend on your mobile phone and how much time you spend reading your Quran? That's true. Okay. That's true. You know, like our still we have we still doing the same style of uh, reading. So, mm. in my age group, we went to um, like a Sunday school madrasa, uh, not madrasa, masjid, in the mornings, and we learned. Or after school in this country, yeah. uh, five to seven, you learn. Your job is to learn how to read. That's it. And mm -hmm. you then you, you're Muslim for for life. Just learn how to read, not understanding mm. anything like that. Mm. And when the young people actually have lots of doubts in their mind. They mm -hmm. could ask, they have a lot of questions in their mind. Who's going to answer them? Mm. Who's going to mm. answer them? So do you face 
people, I mean, I'm sure you also do Dawa work in the, in the Dawa store. Mm -hmm. Do you face people coming to you, you, a Muslim and non-Muslim, asking you questions? Yeah, no, this is or common. What, and what kind of questions are they? I think the, the, the main thing is that, you know, this traditional um, education of the youth, you know, sending them into madrasas and having them to learn the Quran, you know, the, the, the Arabia, <coughs> but not knowing the, the, what it means. This is this is this is where this is where I think personally this is where the problem lies because we I've had constantly so many Muslims come to me personally and other people who I work with in my organisation, you know, asking me for a translated copy of the Quran. Now the question I ask back is why is there not a translated copy of the Quran in your house? Well, very true. If you're supposed to learn from this book, the Quran, and you're reading it in a language you don't understand, what benefit are you going to get rather than talking a language you don't understand? Mm -hmm. Allah says in the Quran, you, you, have to know, you have to know, know la ilaha illallah. <coughs> How are you supposed to know if you don't understand? It's true. And this is, this is um, uh, something I would definitely encourage for the, uh, the, the parents, that sending them to madrasas just so they're learning Arabic, it, don't get me wrong, it's a huge benefit in it. But today where there's so much challenge of people's intellect, you know, all of these uh, so-called rational ideas and, you know, atheism that's getting pushed to the youth, this knowledge is, is not going to be beneficial when it comes to counteracting this. Mm. That is very true. Yeah. Um, Brother Zakaria, so we're going to talk about Ramadan, is because Ramadan is just coming a few days later. Yeah. Um, well, within two, very close by. So there are a lot of issues about young people. You're a young mm -hmm. person yourself. Yep. Imagine you going back about two years back or three years back when you were going to Masjid, or what kind of issues did you face mm -hmm. in the Ramadan? What kind of face, things did you face? You think does it make sense to you? You know, into it. Um, what can we do correctly? Mm -hmm. So, what are the first talk about issues, problems, mm -hmm. and then we'll find it if you can find yeah. some solutions. I think there's quite a few that y you say two years back even relevant to me right right okay. now even. So, um, one I guess the primary one probably in the forefront of many people's minds is exams. Summertime is usually exam period for wh anyone studying, and obviously this year the Ramadan is pretty much in summer as well. So the two clashing, you know, Ramadan can be quite strenuous for people to fast and uh, maintain all their obligations. And at the same time, exams are quite strenuous in that, that they have people who have to revise in the run up to it and they kind of prepare to do their best. So within that pressure, do you think they can get depressed easily? It's too pressure because one thing is mm. so that and easily. one thing is I have to have the result, otherwise I'm going to get, my mum will be not be mm. happy So if exactly. it's mum or dad. There's a stress in terms of I need to achieve the best in my exams because whether that's your parents, whether that's your own drive, whatever it may be. And then the other hand, you have an obligation to fast and to pray and uh, do all these things. And how do you balance the two? How, which one do you do, basically, is the question I think a lot of people are faced with so often, yeah. But did you find it, you actually went through this, did you find it difficult fasting and doing exams? Did you find, how did the balance stay out? I'm uh, sure there are a lot of young people, actually, mm. they probably find it excuse not to be fast. Mm. Mm. Majority of them probably saying, I'm dead, I can't fast because I have to do my exam. And mom and dad will say, because they probably have a very uh, yeah. uh, involved with Islam, they will say, okay, fine. Mm. You know, exams first and then that. Probably, uh, I'm exactly. saying. So how did you manage those two Alhamdulillah, things? Alhamdulillah, you know, I went through this process of thinking about it, but I, I think I came to a solution or like after talking to a lot of people, we came to a solution in that when you think about it, just generally, you're like, okay, I'm going to be hungry or I'm going to be, you know, I'm going to be thirsty, or there's these kind of things that initially come. But you need to kind of think about Ramadan and fasting with the bigger picture. What advantages am I getting from fasting? You know, Allah tells us that when you fast in Ramadan, He will reward for it. And so many people have interpreted that as this reward is so great, is the blessings are so great that He can't even, we, we're not even, we can't fathom it, basically, so we're not told it. So if that is associated with fasting, then we need to think, okay, when I go to an exam and I'm there and I'm fasting at the same time, I'm striving for the sake of Allah, I'm working hard, and at the same time, I'm working to excel in my studies. So what we should actually think is, Allah's, Allah's on my side, He's got my back, He's going to help me get through this exam, as opposed to, it's a hindrance that I'm fasting. Mm. And if we can take that mentality on, there's no scope for depression. It, it takes it out because you, you're thinking positively. By fasting, it's actually increasing 
your mental strength to get through that exam. So mm. it's actually a benefit in, in, that, in that sense, I guess. As a student of doctor, I mean, uh, medicine, mm -hmm. what are the tips or the benefits you think for young people, especially mm -hmm. for fasting? In terms of how to tackle how to fast, do you mean or? I mean, what are the benefits they will get? F I mean, I mean, uh, um, say I'm fasting. It could be a dieting, could mm -hmm. be this, and could be that. You know, yeah. some people probably have don't diet at all, so exactly. that could be one way of doing it. Uh, it's just really so if you could link us up with some of the from a dietary side, I think the most important thing is being clever about h what you're eating and how you're eating and and so on. Mm -hmm. In terms of as the benefits are there. If we're going to be real, you know, it's a long fast. It's about 17, 18 hours here in the UK for many of us. So you're going to be, you know, very dehydrated to some extent if you're not eating correctly. So if you want the advantages and you want the benefits, you need to be thinking how, what types of things am I eating and being careful about that. One more thing. If you're, di if when you're fasting, mm -hmm. do you think, do you think better or when you're not fasting, you think better? What's the medical thing? Hmm. It's, it's a tough one, I think. Uh, it varies, I guess, because it on a person-to-person -person basis. Some people will feel better. Other people may have like a headache or things like that. So it depends, really. But it comes down to just doing the best with your diet. Then you can be optimum. So if you're you know, making sure you're hydrated when you, you can eat, then for the rest of the day, you've done enough so you can get through it, basically. MashaAllah. Brother Abdullah, yeah. um, your first fasting after you oh, became Muslim, yeah. how was it for you? And uh, um, <coughs> yeah, go on. Tell us about your <laughs> fasting journey, then, please. For uh, us. Alhamdulillah. Because there are a lot of young people. Probably first time they will be fasting this mm. year. Probably, mm. you know. Yeah, probably. Of course. So they will learn. Let's see. I, w I would say it's the same thing. What, um, our brother Zachariah said that you know, once you r once you fast for the sake of Allah, Allah will will, will send blessings your way. Because the question is, if you're going to be doing exams, for example, I'll give you this for example, and you don't fast. If you disobey Allah, how do you expect to get Balaka in your exam? SubhanAllah. You understand? Yeah. So if we put, always put Allah first, this is a, a message for you. If you mm -hmm. always put Allah first, Allah will provide. Mm -hmm. Isn't it? Um, now, coming back to my, when I first fasted, um, it, at first it was quite tough. Um, the first two days, especially, I remember, I remember it quite, quite well. And I remember I was staying at um, my parents' house and they were always asking me the questions, why are you fasting? Don't do this to yourself. Because you know? again, my, my parents ain't. Um, I'm not Muslim, um, and I had to keep telling them, you know, why I do it and all of these things. And I, and I said to Allah, I said, Ya Allah, make it easy for me, you know. Subhanallah. Make make them win the hearts of my of my parents, right? And then one day, my my mum fasted with me. Subhanallah. May Allah and then bless this, it, it, it sort of, you know, it, it brought a, a good feeling to my heart. And then from there, it was it, Alhamdulillah, it's been a, a quite an easy. You know, we make dua for your parents. May Allah bless them, there, mm -hmm. like give them a good health. Mm -hmm. And may Allah accept them as well. You know, mm -hmm. this is a religion of truth, actually. Mm -hmm. It's our fault sometimes that we can't mm -hmm. express well. You know, we don't mm -hmm. know our deen, and probably that's the difficult part, actually. Mm -hmm. um, inshallah, if Allah wills, He yeah, will find a way. It, what does Allah say? Allah says in the Quran, the main objective of Ramadan is to increase what? Your taqwa. Taqwa. Mm -hmm. and, when you, and when you see when you're fasting and, you know, all of these uh, things come your way, all these challenges, and your taqwa increases, you will see, and you ask anyone about Ramadan, you ask their salah, how is your salah in Ramadan and outside salah, and outside Ramadan? Of course, it's, you see the difference. It's not the same. No, mm -hmm. no, it's not the same. Never is the same, honestly. Exactly. I mean, like my, I've got three kids. They love Ramadan. Mm -hmm. I don't know, is it because of the, the iftar? <laughs> I'm not sure. <laughs> but they just love it. They just wait mm -hmm. for it. Let's get the Ramadan back again. Mm -hmm. And because it's nice. It's like you have all night festival, isn't it? You pray, tarawih, you come mm -hmm. home, you eat the food. Mm -hmm. And it's all like, almost like late night. Yeah, it's, it's a huge name. It's, it's, it's amazing, huge. beautiful thing. Mm -hmm. But in the same time also, maybe, I'm assuming, there are a lot of young people are watching that they can be looked down into, saying, oh, you're fasting, you know, why are you fasting and blah, blah, blah. Why can't we do something about exam itself? You know, why can't, can we not just put, say, look, it's difficult for young people, you're making it more difficult for them, mm. to mm. be honest. With you. What, can we not do anything about, can we not talk to teachers and say, please change into a month, mm. delay a month? What effect does that have then? Yeah, I think with the exams, because usually they're like nationwide and they're set at the same time, so there's quite a lot of difficulty in terms of uh, changing it. <laughs> but alhamdulillah, you know, you can, you can get through it, like I said, in terms of if you prepare correctly, you need to prepare from now in terms of how you're going to get through it. Mm. 
both mentally, physically, you need to prepare from now. We've got a few weeks utilizing this time. Okay, yeah. imagine I'm first time I'm fasting. Um, mm -hmm. There are lots of river brothers, mashallah, they probably would be fasting the first time as well. Mm -hmm. How do you prepare your mind? What would you, what do we need to do? Mm -hmm. uh, um, I think with the mind is really... Okay, we're going to get a call, we're going to call her here. Okay. Hello, call her, assalamu alaikum. Call her, assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum, uh, am I connected to the studio? Yes, you are live studio, sir. Please go ahead. Uh, mash mashallah, uh, it's very nice to see Brother Luis here. And mashallah, you guys are doing a wonderful job. Uh, and I like the topic, Ramadan and youth. Uh, I've got uh, a quick question for br Brother Luis. That obviously, uh, I know he's a, a trainer in Dawa and alhamdulillah, he does a lot of good things. Quick uh, tips about how to give Dawa to uh, our neighbors, basically. We know we exchange a lot of food, we do a lot of stuff, mm -hmm. but how can we convey our call uh, in a very effective manner? If you can uh, tell us in, uh, in a few words, inshallah, that will be great. Khair, inshallah. Uh, Anything else? Uh, uh, nothing really. No, I think I, that, that's it really. All right, and, thank uh, you. I really appreciate the stuff you guys are doing. Inshallah, may Allah give you barakah. Um, thank you, thank you. May Allah bless you. Jazakumullah khair. Assalamu alaikum. Barakallah bin Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam. So, I think the brother wants to know how to talk to neighbors or give a brief dawah mm. uh, about Islam. Mm. Uh. I think it's a very broad topic. <laughs> uh, <laughs> you know, when you're living in London, every single neighbor is different. You know, have different ideas. So do you have a structure? Do you have a yeah, dawah structure? Yeah, we, we have a structure in the, um, in the curriculum that, that we deliver. Um, it's quite an easy structure. Um, there's four steps. Uh, the first aspect of, of the call is that you bring them to know that Allah exists that there's a creator. Because if, you, if you're going to get in discussions with people who are not Muslim, I'm sure you're going to get asked questions about why you wear hijab, why you have beard, why you go on a Friday to the mosque, all these things. All these things should be really pushed aside. Because Allah says in the Quran, when you discuss with the people, especially when it talks about the Quran, the people of the book, you have to come to, the first discussion is, la ilaha illallah. <coughs> does, Allah, does Allah exist? Is there a creator? You come, you come to these terms and you give them rational arguments. Um, of course, it might take me a long time to explain. When, do, when you say rational, what does it mean for existence? So we, we, we can cover it four mm. steps. So say the first one, how would you cover it? Um, you know, for example, I, I usually start the discussion with, does, you, does, does something come from nothing? Can this universe come from nothing? So that's a Quranic argument itself. Yeah, yeah it's a Quranic argument. Allah says in the Quran, um, did you create yourself or did you come from nothing? That's what Allah says in the Quran. Now, you could ask someone a, a quick question, you know. Your mobile phone. Any, you know, any, any kid in school would know that a creator made the mobile phone. Someone put the elements together to, you know, to make it, to mould it into, you know, and have it, the apple sign. But the universe, laws of physics, you know, science, yeah. all of these things. Who created this? So you, you can give uh, small arguments. There's many books I could, I could recommend that, you know, to give someone um, key arguments you can use against someone who doesn't believe in a creator. Now, if you come to the time that there is a creator, the next step is believing that the creator is one. Because this is the message of Islam, la ilaha illallah, that Allah is one. As soon as you establish that Allah is one, you bring them to the, the Quran. So how do you establish one? What, what, are the reasons, what kind of examples would you use to establish there is a one creator? Because there are a lot of other faith is there more than one creator, they believe mm -hmm. in this and mm -hmm. they believe in lots of different mm -hmm. things. So your arguments or your um, logical arguments, because there are a lot of young people are watching, they, I'm, I'm sure they get this kind of questions. Mm. Uh, I'm sure you had this kind of question yourself. Mm. So mm. what kind of examples can be used uh, um, to... I would say the common question that's usually asked is that who created, who's created Allah? Mm -hmm. Again, the people's knowledge about, for example, when they use the term God, they think, you know, they have ideas that like being a man, you know, all of these mm -hmm. humanistic characteristics. Now, as a Muslim, we need to be grounded with the knowledge about Allah, that, you know, that Allah is uncreated, Allah is one, and Allah is unique to this universe. There's nothing like Him, of course. Now, when someone poses a question, you know, who created Allah? It's flawed straight away, because if you introduce them the concept that Allah is, is uncreated, mm -hmm. You know, they, they, they can take this, but if someone wants to have a discussion, then you'd ask the question, you know, if Allah was created by another God, then that God created by God C, by God D, God E, God F, God G, it will go on for... It's infinite. never ending, it will never, never happen. Ending. It never happened. And even scientifically, infinite doesn't exist. Mm -hmm. Like, you can't go fishing and you're going to get an infinite amount of fish out of the sea. 
So there had to be a stop. So that's why the, the logical position, again, is, is a big discussion that the, that the creator of the universe is uncreated. Now, if you come to this, that Allah is one, uncreated, the next step is the word of Allah, is the Quran. And then after that, the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Inshallah, these so are, these are the steps oh, inshallah. we'll go for a small break and we'll come back Fine. to it, inshallah. Probably the brother wanted to know how you do it. So yeah. the majority of the young people, or brother or sisters are watching. I'm sure they get these kind of questions. So inshallah, they will learn yeah. something from yeah. you, inshallah. Yeah. Dear brother and sisters, we're going to go for a small break, inshallah. Stay with us and see you after the break. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Mm. Assalamu alaikum rahmatullah. Dear brothers and sisters, welcome to uh, View Tower again. Inshallah, we were talking to Lewis uh, um, regarding a brother phone and he wanted to know mm. how you do your dawah. Okay. Uh, especially as a trainer, a lot of young people actually in schools and universities are facing this kind of question all the time. Mm. You know, we get uh, it's sometimes difficult for us to answer them mm -hmm. in logical ways. So, yeah, mashallah, definitely. because you as a trainer, mashallah, you'll be the right person to mm -hmm. ask. So, we were talking about existence of God. Mm -hmm. And also we were talking about oneness of God. We were given a few examples. So mm -hmm. if you could also just give two examples and talk about what's next for you. So uh, if, if the person is established as a creator, the next step is that we need to acknowledge that the creator is one. Because this is the message of Islam and the message of all the prophets. Now, the first question that you would ask is the, the westernized argument, isn't it? Which came first, chicken or egg? Imagine if you mm -hmm. had two creators, which one came first? <laughs> It's, it's simple logic, isn't it? Um, but even if you look into the Quran, Allah, Allah says in the Quran, if there was more than one ilah, one, more than one God, there would be corruption and, uh, corruption and chaos. So it's, if, you, if you look at it from the, from the Quranic perspective, it's clear. Um, logically, the message of all the prophets has always been one God. And if you look into all those, if you look into ways of life which believe in the Creator, those which really believe in more than one Creator, polytheism, is, is very minute. Mm -hmm. Very, very minute percentage of people, um, you know, Hindus and other, other, other ways of life. Um, and to negate those claims is very, is, is quite easy, really. If someone really understands the Quran and thinks about, you know, um, Allah's oneness and Allah's attributes, they can negate any claim. For example, you know, if, if you, Allah is uh, unique, unlike creation. Mm -hmm. Now, the main way of life which claims that there's more than one God, uh, for example, um, from a Hindu's perspective, right? Now their gods are creation. They're not the creator. One of the characteristics of somebody to be called a god is that it creates. So he's uncreated. Mm. Yeah. So as soon as you put an mm. idol in its position, it's not the creator, it's the created. Mm. Okay, that's a good point. So the, the, these are the sort of understandings that the youth need to have mm. because today there's, there's such an intellectual push against people's faith, especially the Muslims, that they're not having the, you know, the, the, the ability to, to, to counteract the arguments that mm. are coming towards them. And a lot of them are taking it. If they don't have the, the knowledge and they don't have the, let's say, the, the ammunition to, to fight against it, Especially if you don't know your own deen, like if you don't know Asma mm. husna the names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, mm. if you don't know what they mean mm -hmm. and if you don't know what they stands for, mm -hmm. then how would you know mm. that you're worshipping what you're worshipping exactly. is not? Exactly. This is what one, one of the, one of the um, parts of the, 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 the uh, curriculum that we deliver is that understanding Allah's attributes. Now if you speak to any logical person, whether they be a Muslim, a Christian or a Jew, or any other way of life, and they believe in one creator, they would agree with all of, 99, all of the 99 names of Allah. As soon as you apply their um, ideology about Allah to it, it falls apart. Mm -hmm. Subhanallah, Subhanallah. So what's next then? What do you, what do you teach them next? So the fourth step you said. Mm. So, so what's, if, what's if the they believe that there's a creator, this is the first step. Establish that they believe in a creator. Especially if your neighbours are atheists and all these things. You, you make them understand that there's a creator to this universe. Then the next step is about the creator. You know, the creator's oneness, his attributes. And then the next step is the creator's word the creator's gu the, the guidance, the manual, which is the Qur'an. And then from there, is the one, which the, the one who delivered the Qur'an, which is the Prophet Muhammad okay. If you take this route, it's a very uh, easy and uh, slow method in giving da'wah. For example, if it's a neighbour, we were discussing before, mm -hmm. you could take this discussion months, you know, uh, time by time, and you just, you can go through this, this avenue. MashaAllah, JazakAllah khair. I hope the brother who phoned up, I hope he learned something from this. And um, mm -hmm. if I could come to you again, young man, um, you're still a student. Um, 
what kind of wishes do you get in university schools and you, you, in, especially in Ramadan? Mm -hmm. Because most probably you, all your friends are eating, but they're probably playing, they're doing all that stuff. So you're fasting, you can't get involved with this kind of stuff. So what happens? Do you get bullied? Do you get, um, probably sisters are probably doing hijab in the school and university, mm -hmm. they, are they looked down into it? Do you, get, do you face any difficulties in those fields? I think, not, I haven't personally, alhamdulillah, but people may do, but I think it's the questions that's probably mm -hmm. most people experience in terms of, oh, you're not eating lunch with me, you usually do, why not, mm -hmm. oh, I'm fasting, okay. So it's that kind of, the changes that people see, they'll ask, why are you doing it, or, uh, you know, what's the purpose so behind it. So what would you it? say in return, if they ask you, why are you fasting, what would you say? Mm -hmm. It's a point, it's yeah. an opportunity for you to give dawah. Exactly, so. this is <laughs> it, as in, without you having to go up to someone and saying, do you know about this? They're actually coming to you and saying, why are you fasting for, what, why are you doing this for? And... I think the main thing for us is really acknowledging it's an opportunity as opposed to just saying, oh, don't worry about it, I, I just do it. And mm. that's, a lot of us feel pressured, I think, to do that kind of keep our faith very much mm. to ourselves and kind of hide, shy away from it. Whereas, you know, truly what we should be doing is actually savoring the opportunity and saying, this is why we're doing, you know, for the sake of Allah or, you know, for the sake of the God that I believe in. And then that opens it up beautifully, I think, to mm. the kind of the four steps in if they don't believe in a God or they don't quite understand, okay, let's go through this process. Let me explain, do you even believe in a creator and, and, and work out? And not only do you educate that person, you're fulfilling your duty of kind of spreading the word of Islam, not necessarily getting someone to revert, but just passing on the message of this is, mm. this is the true religion. But imagine a lot of uh, areas, I'm not talking about around Muslim okay. uh, dominated areas, mm. there are a lot of uh, uh, minority are living in the area and imagine what they're going through. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of sisters actually been attacked because of the hijab. A lot of them been, you know, beaten, spit on, a lot of things happened to them because of their identity as a Muslim. Mm. Um, and then also they're fasting now, they, he builds up to them. So how do you think how can we actually, what kind of advice can we give to this law, those sisters actually going through this difficult period of, mm. of, of their life? How, what can we say to them? Mm. I think if people are suffering such things, it's really kind of taking the precautions and, and making sure uh, whatever they're doing, they're safe in that, like if someone knows where they're going uh, and so on. But also the other side of things is if it's happened to someone, reporting it, making sure these things are becoming being documented in that, that, you know, if it's a hate crime or something like that, that it's being documented. I think so many people kind of experience it. They tell their friends, mm. but that's that's really it. But if you at least report it to the authorities or you, anyone within that area, whoever's looking after the area, then they can see, okay, this is becoming an issue. Mm. This is something that we need to uh, tackle. Because I remember one of my friends actually, she, and um, she was just going to the, walk in the morning and someone just came and punched in her face and walked off oh, oh and wow. she's a woman can you imagine what she's going through mm. just because she had a um, hijab on mm. subhanallah and this is uk i mean this is one of the most tolerant society in the in the world probably mm. um i think but still we face this kind of issues mm. and for our sisters it's difficult so how do we empower our sisters because knowledge is a power yeah like louis said if you mm. know the answers it's not a problem. You, you, you're proud to say, talk about the creator who created everything. Mm -hmm. We're not talking about uh, something smaller, who created the universe and the galaxy and you name them everything. Yeah. We are just part of a, exactly. <laughs> part of a creation. So mm -hmm. we're owned by something really big, subhanAllah. I should yeah. be proud of that. Exactly. So how can we, I don't know if, we, if, if sisters are facing the kind of issues, definitely they are. How can we empower our sisters? So in Ramadan, imagine we all go into mosque. Mm -hmm. A lot of the mosques don't have access for women. Mm. What, where do they go? I what happens to them? Yeah, I think all these things are the fact that we need to be working together. We need to actually be a community. You know, a lot of people were Muslim by name, but mm. that's really it. Our neighbours are strangers to us. The people that live around us are strangers. <laughs> and like you said, we're not maybe connected to the masjid. We're not connected to the masjid. We, we don't have the opportunity to go because they may not be a facilities for women or whatever it may be and this just creates people into little silos into little pockets so then they feel alone they feel, you know if something happens to them th there isn't that support network to help them there they may be someone that can actually help them and advise them and but they don't know of that because we're not connected together 
you know, united together as an ummah that, that we should be really. I was, I was quite surprised when Lu uh, Louis said, um, before we come to the show, that in their stalls, mm. Dawa stall, yes. they're just standing there and talking to people. Muslim queue mm -hmm. to take Quran. Yeah. They've got a lot of questions. Their brothers and sisters are lining up to ask you questions. Tell me what that means. Tell me what, what shall I do. And a lot of people are changing, alhamdulillah. Big mm. people, a number of people are changing, Muslim. If they didn't have that store so. or that place, where would they go? Where would they, where, where would they go? Yeah. Let's, isn't it a bit sad that we have mm. institutes around the country, big institute, who don't have access for those people yeah. who want to ask questions? Any kind of questions. I think the key point you said is access. You know, a lot of the time, the knowledge is there. There's an individual who has studied years upon years upon years, educating themselves mm. about Islam, about whatever matter it may be. They're there in the communities, but the access isn't there. They're not maybe open in a way that people feel like, OK, I can approach this person mm. or I know where to find them and, and I can put these forward, these questions forward. And then that's when people stumble upon a dawah stall maybe which may be kind of pre obviously targeted towards more educating non-Muslims, but that's that friendly face, that's that easy access that they found, and then they, they come with the or, question. Or is it because Louis is, mashallah, a good-looking brother, <laughs> <laughs> curious just to ask him a question, please pray. <laughs> so, Louis, um, when, mm. we, when you uh, be, uh, became part of the Muslim community, <coughs> mm -hmm. what kind of difficulty did you face? Because I'm sure lots of people got a lot of ideas or advice for you. Cause these are free advice. They don't have oh, to course, follow. Yeah. They give you everything. You do it. <laughs> right? Not for me. It's for you. Mm. I'm sure you had a lot of these things. How do you verify that who is saying the right thing? Again, it, I think it's taking knowledge from the authentic sources, from the correct people, the, you know, the people of knowledge. Um, I, think that, I think, again, one of the main problems with the youth of the Muslims today is that they're taking most of their information from where? Google. Google is such a, um, for my personal opinion... If you is, can't verify, is, then is, it's is, a problem. Is, is, is a very, it can be very <laughs> good, but again, it has so many negatives. You have to Because know, it's yeah. got so much polluted yeah. information out there. Um, it opens up people's minds to, to come off the path of Islam because they'll see other things on the <laughs> internet which will counteract their beliefs. And again, if they're not well knowledge in their own belief, then they're going to they're gonna be in for a, a big problem. Now, I think, when again, when it comes to knowledge, access mm -hmm. the masjids the, you know the, the the muslim organizations need to have things in place for the youth <coughs> because if the youth are not being catered for if they're not getting the correct knowledge the tarbiyah which they should be getting then it, you know give it 20 30 years in the line when they're supposed to be taking your shoes mm -hmm. yeah how are these organizations going to be run that's a point this is it yeah. Yeah, thinking. That's a point. As, as as a muslim ummah this is this is one of the basic you know things that, that Muslims should be thinking about, especially those in certain positions of, of authority within the Muslim organisations. They should be thinking about who's going to take my shoes. Mm. Or even if you only have your planning meetings, yeah. get youth involved. Yeah, because yeah. you're raising money from everybody, and what can they have to say? Mm. Subhanallah. Yeah, what can I have a? The, you know, like majority of the majority of the mosque and the, and the centres and other places, mashallah, lots of women pays their donation. Loads of brothers and mm. sisters, mashallah, they 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 got big heart. Mm. Um, so they should be part of your plan. They should yeah. be part of. Have some respect for them. They don't think they don't know. They're just giving you. No, no, they know. They want this to happen. Mm, mm, mm. So why can't they have their say? Yeah. In, a, in, a, in, in, a, in a decent way, of course, definitely. So yeah, of course. they need to have access, definitely. Otherwise, you will find people going out. And mm. they are out. They're going, mm. queuing up in the mm. stall. They're queuing up in this, uh, w we don't know where. Not in the mosque, mm. subhanAllah. Mm. A lot of the time, it's, a, it's people speaking for, for them. So if you have maybe the organizing committee mm -hmm. of an o yeah. institution or organization or masjid, or whatever it may be, OK, the children or the youth need this. This particular group needs this. So then we'll organize this and this. But whatever activity <coughs> may be, they organized a class or something it might not attract the actual uh, kind of group that they're wanting mm. to, the youth, let's say, for this example, because that conversation of what do you actually want? You know, you're studying, you're doing this, you're mm. doing this. What do you want from my institution, from my masjid? Is do it a you, class? Yeah, do you think language is a problem? So uh, I think um, first mm. you, so yourself, you speak Bengali and yeah. you speak Urdu. Okay, I don't know about speak Urdu. Just uh, okay, just <laughs> uh, okay. And, uh, English, yeah. So when you go for say go, you go to a mosque, a normal mosque. Mm -hmm. I'm not talking about the big ones. Yeah. Do you engage? Do you think 
okay or do you feel you, you're not engaging at all? Yeah, I think it's very much literally people go to fulfill an obligation. I need to pray Salah, I'll go to the masjid, pray, and then that's it. And there is no engagement at all? Th that's, that's so imagine doing the f you go on Friday, the mm. khutbah in probably Bengali, yeah. right? Pick How up do you word engage? here and there and then and that's you it. Just, yeah. You got just gone. And if we okay, how much would you understand, even if it's, even if it's Bengali, mm. so he's giving a khutbah for 20 minutes. Yeah. Percentage where, how much would you understand? 20% maybe, if I'm lucky, lucky that day, I guess. Subhanallah. Mm. I think what we need 80 to... 80% he doesn't know. Mm. And he's, that's his own language. It's not that he's not his problem, it's my kids and my, even myself mm. as well. Because, mm. you know, especially the language is, is a difficult part. So 80% he doesn't understand, how would he engage? Mm -hmm. in, 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 uh, what would he learn? And 20% he understood, I'm, I'm assuming if you dig it down, mm. he will say, uh, maybe I thought this means this and that means that. Yeah. <laughs> For you, sir, mm. you go to lots of mosques, right? Yeah. I'm sure you do. Yeah. And how do you know what they're talking about, what they're saying? You don't, do you? Again, it depends on what language they I, I can only really speak in English. So I know most of this, most of the uh, mosques, they mm. don't have an English speaker, mm. imams. Mm -hmm. So you go there. And you sit in there, mm -hmm. and he's talking. So you're thinking maybe from. Uh, I'm, I'm sure he's good. Mm. I'm sure he's saying it. So mm. you don't. You have no connection. Mm. This is the thing. What what is khutbah? Yeah. Khutbah is a speech, something to deliver a message to people. Now, if a portion of those people are not getting the message, then mm -hmm. it's, it's not doing the job which it should be doing. Now, if the youth, especially, are going to these these khutbahs on a Friday on a on a weekly basis, and are not taking any information, mm -hmm. subhanallah. You lost it. So we're not even planning for this. Yeah. SubhanAllah, that's the sad part is, we're not even planning for our young people, for the next generation. Mm. And what we, mm. and we actually also complaining, how come they don't come to the mosque? Mm. How come they don't do this? How mm. come they don't do that? You're not engaging with them. There's no space for them in the mosque. There's no nothing. Mm. Uh, there is no, uh, when they come in, young people, you've got to welcome them. Mm. This is the prophetic way. You mm. welcome them, yeah. you hug them and you give them something better, or at least smile, say, mm -hmm. welcome, very mm -hmm. good. You're exactly. In your age, mashallah, you're doing so well. And that's all, that's mm. all that's That's needed. what you need, yeah, but exactly. we don't have that. It should be you know, praised. We, if we anything, it's the opposite. Yeah, I've, I've seen so many instances of, of, of the young people getting removed from the masjid, being kicked out, and you wonder why they're on the street. Subhanallah. May Allah, may Allah give us more uh, uh, understanding of Islam, especially, mm. and an understanding mm. of the Creator who wants us to actually spread his deen. Yeah. And it's a beautiful deen, Allah, it's, it's unbelievable. Any point you pick up, if you're a rational man, you will say, SubhanAllah, it's amazing, mm -hmm. it's amazing. Um, can I ask, what are the solutions you think, if you're ideal mosque, imagine you, mm. want, you, are, you become a millionaire, imagine, <laughs> and you want to have a, a, a community center of the mosque, what would it look like, what kind of stuff would you have there? I think it, it, the first thing is that I would contact my community and ask them what they need first. Mm -hmm. All age? All ages. People, women, men, old, young, English speaking, Bangla speaking, everyone. So you've got a picture of what is needed from the community. If you're sitting in a chair and you think you know what everyone else wants outside, then you know, this is being quite stubborn, isn't it? You need to know what your, what your community needs. If you don't ask them, you're not going to know. Now, from my, my perspective, you need to tick every box, especially the youth, especially this topic on youth. There, there, needs, there needs to be a, a very big push for the youth, their, their education, weekly tarbiyah, you know, getting them into the mosque. There should be people going out to get them in. All of these things, all of these activities should be happening for the young people. Because again, and then again, it comes to educating the, 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 the parents, because the first point of education for a, a young Muslim should be his house. And if all he's getting is a Zainamaz and a Quran given in Bangla, which he don't even understand, yeah. he's not going to know his religion. So there should be, you know, it's, it's a very broad topic. There's a big, you know, it's a very big discussion. So would you say um, in your ideal mosque, you should have uh, a community center, you should have access of young people to do something there? Would you have a coffee area? Yeah. Would you have... Should be like a youth club, something like this. You know, this, these are things that non-Muslims do. Yeah. SubhanAllah, I'm telling you, non-Muslims sometimes engage better with the youth than the Muslims do. There should be a youth club, a, a part of the masjid, which is for the youth, to bring them up, to educate them, to get them in, 
Because the reason why the majority of the Muslim youth ain't in the mosque because they're not entertained. They're going out for other entertainment, entertainment outside. Cars, you know, phones, all these things. They need to be entertained inside in a, in a, in a good way, in an Islamic way. And, um, and yeah, I, I think that's... Okay, that's but Zakaria, that's so when honest. you say entertainment, what kind of stuff do you want in your mosque? Mm -hmm. Imagine one day, one day, they say, okay, <laughs> okay, um, doctor, whatever you want, you can have it. Mm. What would you want in your mosque? I think it varies, so like some people... Mm. Because well, the, the reason we're talking about yeah. it, because Ramadan is coming, so we can at least, if one or two uh, our uh, advice people picks it up, mashallah, mm. it's done. Mm. So what yeah. would you want in your place? I think the main things, one, like the obvious one that people think about is sport. But the other one I think is just, just having a space for people to just relax, mm. chill out. You know, when we talk about so many people on the streets just hanging around, mm -hmm. they're not watching cinema or anything like this they just stood around mm. because there's that space mm. just to relax and if you, if the masjid and the, provides that safe space for them to meet with their friends maybe have something to eat just have a talk catch mm. up on what's happening if the masjid is that safe space then they're, they're going to come naturally to it whereas if you're saying to someone you're too loud or you're this you're kicking them out mm -hmm. there's nowhere else to go yeah, place like America, you will find they have a basketball mm, outside exactly. the mosque, you know, close by. So it's they, nothing they complicated. That's what I'm trying to uh, get. I think just a simple space where people can relax, can meet with their friends, sports, whatever. It's not mm. something that's you know so out there and that you need to even be a millionaire mm. for. It's it's something that we have the resources for. We just need. Yeah. To so make imagine, it we, imagine we're gonna go play football, right? Yeah. We could say, look, well, let's get together in the mosque. We're gonna have a, we plan it within the mosque, have tea, coffee, and then go and play exactly. football. So they know there's a room there for them, there's a space for them, mm -hmm. they can go there and meet up. That's, mm -hmm. that's and when you're inside the mosque, you're not going to do any silly things because mm -hmm. you know this is the house of Allah, you will respect that, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Of course. And yeah. this, this is the only way you can uh, get their heart within mm -hmm. the mosque. Exactly. SubhanAllah. So I think wherever we are, yeah. we can talk to our mosque. We can say mm -hmm. to them, uncle or sasa or murabi, yeah. if you can help us out, I, I've got a group of people, if you, have, if you can have access, mm -hmm and we can have a small this, 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 mm. then that would be good. I think that's where the change begins, especially with the viewers even, you know, everyone has that masjid that they attend, mm -hmm. that they will have potential influence on. They may not necessarily be the ones mm -hmm. planning it, but like you said, you'll know one person or you'll know that Imam, just approaching them and having that conversation of, why don't we start doing this or why don't we do that? If everyone did that in all the masjids, just say even in London, that's the start of us actually beginning to engage mm. with the youth in a productive way that we've just like, just like we've talked about really. Mm. MashaAllah, that's great man. Um, Ramadan, it's, we don't have much time, we'll come back. Uh, um, Ramadan is a month of uh, Quran. Mm. It's a special month for Muslims and especially when you're in a Muslim country, it's totally different. Mm -hmm. um, we want to talk about how we learn <laughs> to read Quran mm -hmm. and what should we learn and how do we practice it? Mm -hmm. And how do we apply in our, in our, in our lives? Because yeah. a lot of people are actually probably doing Tajweed, they're probably doing the Karat and they're probably doing other stuff. But are we learning the basics? Your Aqidah, mm -hmm. your meaning of mm -hmm. your Islam, meaning of your Deen or your... Is our Aqidah clear? Mm -hmm. If someone asks me, who do you believe? Can I answer that person? Yeah. It's important. If I mm. can't answer that person, that means something's wrong with my understanding. Mm -hmm. uh, um, we just can't use somebody else's word to answer them. Mm -hmm. So I think if when we after this break, when we come back, inshallah, we can talk about these things. Um, because Louis, actually, you studied Quran quite deeply. You actually, because you came from outside, for mm. you it's just a beginning, and you want to deep inside. For us, sometimes it's really easy. I'm, I'm a, it's took it for granted. Mm -hmm. You know, we took it for granted that oh, I've learned. I'll be fine, I'm doing okay. But I've never been questioned, I've never been checked for if my Tajweed okay, is my Akhida mm -hmm. okay, is my Islam okay. Mm. You know, because we've run away. Yeah. Because we don't have access to scholars. So that, that could be one of the uh, issues we can, uh, how do we link with ulamas? Mm. Because their presence, their understanding is the, definitely better than mine because mm. I'm not, I don't have access to that. Of course. Yeah. So the, one more thing I want to say before we uh, go to thingy. A lot of, so after the break, inshallah, we will come back to the brothers and sisters. We're going for a small break, and inshallah, and after the break, we'll talk about how to read Quran, how to understand Quran, 
And also we will ask Lewis how to break it down. Why is it so special that book can't be copied? Why is it special that whoever reads the first time, mashallah, he falls in love with the Quran and then will want to do shahada? And why can't we Muslims connect with that book? SubhanAllah. So may Allah give us tawfiq to understand, inshallah. So I'll see you after the break. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah, dear brothers and sisters, welcome back again to Ramadan and youth. Inshallah, we were talking about Quran and also we were talking about how to speak to our non-Muslim neighbors and friends. Now we're going to talk about how to engage with them, our young people, also with their neighbors, especially in Ramadan. We can offer them iftar, we can offer them something in their line, they love food, definitely. Especially with the young people, we need to know what kind of food they're liking for iftar. Now, this is something missing. We all love iftar but for our young people are we actually asking them what kind of chores they have if mm. I ask go to Lewis again Lewis <laughs> um, iftar let's mm. start with iftar okay you know the food we have yeah. it is that old style of food right mm -hmm. I've yeah. seen my granddad done it my dad done it I'm doing it mm. I like it but it doesn't mean my son should like it mm. they should have a choice so how do we balance this out? I mean, if, because if that is one of the main part of the fasting, isn't yeah. it? Food's coming, man, food. Mm. So what would you do? Or how do you do it? Uh, in my household, we, we have a uh, sort of a democratic vote. Okay, mashallah. Uh, <laughs> on what, what, what we want to eat that night. Um, or, you know, we, we build it in uh, days in succession. Um, yeah, we have a vote. Some we designate certain people in the household to take the role to then cook the food. You know, get again. You know, getting the youth to learn how to cook. Subhanallah. You ask some of the the, the boys, can they cook? <laughs> they don't even know how to do tea. <laughs> cha, you know, like cha. They yeah. don't know how to make cha. Our, no, okay. One thing with boys. Okay. Mm. Our old, some of our olders, our uncles and fingers. Some of my relatives I know, they don't know how to make tea. Pro believe me, they have probably never been to the. Tea. This mm. is a disaster. Mm. Yeah, you don't help your wife? Why yeah. not? You don't help your mom? Why not? If we look at the best role model, Prophet Muhammad Allah. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, yeah. he used to sew his own clothes. You look at the condition of some of the men today, chuck it to their wife. I mean, this is, this is so, I find it really horrible. Yeah. You don't, we don't help our, in our home. How mm. would your kids see you, your, your good behavior? Mm. All the time you're asking your wife to do this, 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 this. He will know my dad done that. He will do the same. Mm. He will do the they same. They pick up habits. And why would he mm. like you if you actually ordered your, your wife? Actually, he, she is mother of somebody. And the son is watching. What's, what's going on with my dad? He keeps mm. telling her what to do all the time. Mm. She can't sit down with me. She can't have a chat with me. Why? She's cooking. She's doing this. She's doing that. What's my dad doing? Watching TV. Mm -hmm. <laughs> or maybe smoking. I don't know. Yeah. Subhanallah, okay, not the food. <laughs> okay, it's the month of Ramadan, it's, mm. it's the month of Quran. Mm -hmm. Subhanallah, Quran is, is it's an amazing book, like Louis said in the beginning. This is unthinkable, the information he has, mm. especially in the seventh century, no man would know. Subhan no man would know the expansion of the, the universe, the, the, why is the mountains out there, why is it so important? Why is the layer of the oceans, and the, the sea, you know, Subhanallah. The, you name them, the fingertips. It's amazing information that there. So somehow, we Muslims, somehow, we're not connected with that Quran. Mm. And subhanAllah, you're, I'm not going to say you're lucky, actually. God chose you to be part of that book. Mm. And you actually went through that book. And um, you found amazing connection with that book mm. and Allah. Mm. So majority of our, I can't say majority, a lot of our young people or parents, don't know how to even read Quran. That's mm -hmm. the sad part. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, if I could ask you first, because mm -hmm. we have a call. Okay. Hello, caller. Assalamu alaikum. Mr. Kenneth Crosby speaking. Hi, Mr. Crosby. How are you? Uh, I'm, I'm quite well. Thank you. How are you? I'm okay. We are talking about Quran and fasting. And we're talking want, about the creator to, uh, of the I universe. I want to uh, your presenter. Okay. It's Rajoli. Thank you. Give me my best wishes. Thank you, sir. And have a nice holiday. Thank you. Thank you so much for your call. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Thank you. Bye. 
Uh, that's one of my friend. Um, is oh, amazing sure. young man. Mashallah, he's oh. given us the wishes. Um, <coughs> he's from a different faith, mm -hmm. so that's good to hear somebody calling us and give us his yes. wishes. Um, so how? Why is it you think? Sometimes we're not bothered about Quran mm. as a Muslim, but people from outside the faith they love that book. Mm. Um, so can you give us a few ideas why that book is so special to people who are outside, not inside? I don't know if the question makes sense. <laughs> it's, it's, again, I know there, there, of, there's so many... In it, but I had to. I think, I think one of the things that uh, people need to come to realise that is that you won't love something unless you know it. If you don't know Quran, how do you expect to love Quran? Do you understand? It's a simple answer. It's a simple answer. answer. Yeah. For example, you ask someone who's never met their mum. Never met them. The likelihood is that the, the, the love affair between them and their mum will be, will be, will be affected. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, if you don't know Allah's word, how would you know Allah? How would exactly. you know Allah and how would you love Allah? Allahu Akbar. So, this is where, again, it comes down to reading, you know, having the access to read it in a, in a, in a way which you can f understand and you can ponder. Because Allah says in the Quran, He tells the Muslim to ponder, reflect, think about your existence. Why are you here? Now, if you're not asking yourself these subconscious questions when you're reading a book, but you're reading it in a language where you don't understand, you're not going to get any benefit from it. Now, one of the things, when I, when I first read the Qur'an, there was a, there was a verse, um, Allah says in the Qur'an that, that, that we created the universe, that an expanding universe, and that everything was created from water. And I, I knew from basic science that, you know, most things in this, in this world, living, living beings, are created from H2O water. Mm -hmm. And I thought, Wait there, I read on the back of this book, you know, this is when I was not Muslim, I read the back and I said, this book uh, came from a man, Prophet Muhammad Wasallam, couldn't read or write, in Arab Peninsula, 1,400 years ago. How did and you I, read, I read some of these verses, and then what I did, is I went and challenged one of my scientist lecturers, you want a Muslim? I said, did, did you know that there's, this book it has this knowledge? And he goes, nah, it's not true, don't, don't listen to it. So I thought, no, 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 I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna be, mm -hmm. you know, not open-hearted. I'm gonna try and look into this. And the more and more you actually read Quran, someone with an open heart, someone who really believes in Allah, believes in, you know, there's a purpose to their life, and they read this Quran, Allah will guide them through this Quran, without a doubt. So imagine you teaching young people, right? Mm. I'm aged between uh, um, eight to twelve. Mm. Okay. How would you engage them with that Quran? How, what would you say to them to engage with that Quran? As a teacher, what would you say to them? I, I would say, I would, I would emphasize the teaching on the, the meaning. Yes. meaning. I think, I think that, don't get me wrong, the traditional method of, of teaching the youth, you know, how to recite Ar Arabic and to memorize, that is very beneficial, don't get me wrong, but if that's not been supported with meaning, it's wasted. For example, there's a, a great Imam, Imam Shafi, rahimahullah, he said, knowledge is not what's memorized, it's what's practiced and applied. SubhanAllah. Mm -hmm. If it's not applied, it, is, it serves no purpose. I'll give you another example. When we were talking about the Dawah stools, we, we have some tables um, in Whitechapel area. And again, we have a lot of the Muslim youth, they come to us because again, there's no one engaging to them. There's no one getting involved with them. They come to us and they see free English Quran. You know, the, it comes to their eyes. They think, oh, I don't have one. So they come and approach us. And they ask me, can I have an English translation of the Quran? And the first question I ask is, why do you not have one? Uh, in my house, it's, it's only a Bangla Quran, it's only in Arabic, I don't... I said, do you understand it? And they go, Buchi nai. SubhanAllah, how can they not know? How can they not read the Quran in a language where they can Inna understand? <coughs> somehow what happens is, um, when we've grown up, mm. we've been somehow told that if you read Quran in, 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 in translation, you will understand and you're going to get... you're going to be... Uh, lost. So these are the ideas coming from mm. uh, mm. learned people saying, no, no, you can't read. If you read, you'll be, you don't know what you're doing. Mm. So when you forget that, come to uh, lectures and you learn. But you go to the lectures, actually, this is what you want to hear. That's what they say. They're not mm. saying what they, they want to tell you how to impress you. You know, sometimes mm. it's like mm. that. That's why we don't learn anything. And you become a blind flower. So you can't move left or right. You know, so that's why we have a lot of blind flowers. Mm. Brother Zakaria, mm. you guys uh, do lots of amazing stuff. What's your plan for Ramadan, especially as a student team? What's okay. your plan? So, 
with <coughs> with the project of Rock reconnecting our community through kindness, um, is mainly the medical students and the dental students within the Queen Mary University. How many? How many are they? Sorry. How many are there people involved? There's about, as in, there's a core team of three people. Okay. Uh, one brother named Zakaria as well, and then you have Johar, Zara. So there are three of them, and then you have more people uh, supporting them and so on. But I want to talk about like, why that team formed okay. in the first place. And it was a realization that happened maybe about three years so ago. So one more thing, how many volunteers do you get? Are you volunteers, it's very fluid. So t at times we have events with five, sometimes there's 20, 30. Okay. So it depends because there's so many events going on okay. across the year. It's really hard to kind of uh, give you an exact number on that. But initially what happened was here someone came to us and told us, you know, as medics, as dentists, you are probably <laughs> in terms of academically, you're the top kind of 5% mm. of all people, of all students. Now, you're here in this area, in, within Whitechapel, within East London, does the local community actually know that you exist? You're here studying your mm. books, but in terms of practicality, do they know that you exist? Are you having an impact that actually they know that you're mm. here? And that's what Rock came from in terms of, yes, that's a, actually, that's true, let's start benefiting our community. So in Ramadan, um, l the plans are still uh, ongoing, but last year, some of the things that we did was, you know, kind of, you have neighbors, like you said, they'll be wondering, you're fasting, mm. what are you doing? So begin that conversation, share some food, <coughs> share some iftars. It's, it's so kind of um, unheard of now, especially in London, that your neighbors mm. come and, and give you some food. It's like, what's, what's going on? It's yeah. so strange, but that's, that's how we should be as Muslims. We should start that act, you know, do good deeds in, in that nature. Um, so that's one aspect. The other aspect is educating people for Ramadan from a medical kind of uh, side of things in terms of many people have different illnesses and there are certain allowances Allah has made for us that we don't need to fast. You know, we don't need to burden ourselves if we have certain illnesses mm. and stuff. That allowance is there for us and we should take it. So kind of educating our local community within the Whitechapel area. So actually this Saturday, um, inshallah, we have an event at the East London Mosque um, just after Zohar, so 1.45, free, open to all brothers, sisters. Um, we're gonna do it in English and, and Bangla so everyone can uh, understand. And what we'll be talking about is really how to have a healthy uh, Ramadan and inshallah. maintain your well-being. So if you, if you are ill, mm. how to uh, make the most mm. out of it or even telling people when you know you might need to not fast as well so being practical about it really great work yeah. man great work mashallah we're very proud of you guys honestly yeah. and your team yes <laughs> definitely um brother lewis mm -hmm. um if i could ask last part of your um dawah style so the, about the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam himself mm -hmm. so if you could tell our viewers especially young people the quality he has and the legacy he left it would be really really i know it's, it's a big <laughs> Okay, but if you could squeeze it into um, I think again when it comes you to won't be Justin if we don't talk about him. So no, of I course. If you look into Islamic history, whenever there's been a revival, it's always been from the youth. Now, again, we need to give the youth um, an education to know the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. That he is the ultimate role model. That if you follow his guidance and what he brought to us and you follow him, there is nothing better than it. Now, again, the month, uh, this month, is going to be coming, this month of Ramadan, when the Qur'an was revealed. Yeah. Now, why don't you reveal it to a non-Muslim? <laughs> MashaAllah, good, amazing, <laughs> I never had that before. I'm telling you, you, yeah. you ask any Muslim, they, you, they're bound to have a non-Muslim neighbour. Mm. Use, this, use this Ramadan to give, give them a copy of the Qur'an. Anyway, that's a side note. I would say that the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, his biography, which anyone can get access to these days, I would encourage the parents to really provide this for their children to understand what qualities the Prophet Muhammad had. Mm -hmm. so, so. And one of them was manners. Allahu Akbar. I'm telling you, the youth today, this is, the, this is one of the biggest problems I see. If you get on any bus in London after three o'clock and you see some of the way these school kids conduct themselves, you know, you would really question that humanity has any, any hope. So it's the manners, you know, the akhlaq, these, these Islamic principles that the Muslims need to have embedded in them, need to be really enforced within the youth. Now, manners is one of them. The, the other thing is respect to your parents. Praying. 
you know, there's so many basics, basics, basics that you can take from the Prophet Muhammad's life. Can I ask you one more thing? I might forget. So, um, we're talking about Muslim kids uh, in respecting their parents. But can I ask you, as a personal mm. question, how is your relationship with your... Because as a Muslim, you have more duty to love your parents now than before. Because mm. how, how, do you do, how do you do it? Alhamdulillah, this is... Um, it's a test for you. No, right? of course it's a test. But I, from, from my personal um, situation, is I, I try to do as much as I can to serve them, serve my parents, to, you know, to invite them to meals, bring them mm. into you know, my house, into, to meet our neighbours, meet the Muslims, bring them to the mosque. You know, get them involved, get them to know, because one of the things that I knew clearly, even without even asking my mum and dad, that you know, they were scared of me entering the unknown, the, you know, the unknown. They don't know what Islam is. And whatever they're going to take from the media, you know, of course they're going to be naturally scared. So one of the things is that, that I talk to myself is that, you know, if I was going to introduce them about Islam, it should be a gradual, you know, a, a, a moderate way of letting them learn about Islam practically from the Muslims, because we should be the ones presenting Islam. You know, if I introduce my mum and dad to some, some Muslims and they act bad, they're going to take that as, as Islam. Mm -hmm. So, again, with, with my parents especially, I, I took it very gradually. I brought them into no, my house, the into way. the masjid. That is the best way. Yeah. Um, I didn't impose anything upon them. Of course, there's, nothing, there's no compulsion in religion, so I can't force anything yeah. upon them. But again, it's my, you know, it's my duty now for me to convey the message to them in, in a way which they can understand. Um, and, and yeah, and Alhamdulillah. And I'm sorry, I had to get you involved uh, <laughs> into your personal. But it, it does give indication, you know. Even even they're not in the same faith, but your love and your uh, and respect for them is yeah. still there. Subhanallah. <laughs> that's that's important. Mm. That is important. Um, sorry. Uh, then move on. You was going to say something about the prophet's uh, characters. Um, so one of them is respect. Your so yeah, respect manners. These these are the things which th should be focused on the youth and knowledge. The Prophet Muhammad said there's an obligation upon every Muslim to obtain knowledge, mm -hmm. specifically Islamic knowledge. Because, again, if, we, if we're going to be bringing up our kids and all we're focusing on is making them doctors and lawyers, but yet we're not giving them the Islamic education, where, where, where are they going to go? You've got to balance it out. You've got, got to have balance, balance it out, of course. And again, it comes from the home. <coughs> the home has to be the hub of where a young Muslim is going to be taught about Islam. And again, I know naturally within the, the generations which came into Britain, it was a very old style of education, you know, give them a book, put a tuppy on their head, <laughs> shove them into a madrasa, you follow the imam, you, you follow him, and then he, hopefully, after a couple of years, they'll be praying. Yeah. This isn't that day and age no more. People are reflecting, people are thinking, people are going online and experiencing all sorts of stuff, which are going to be clouding their judgment about their purpose in this life. So this is why, again, Islam has to be brought in a way which is going to cater for the youth. Inshallah. Their way of thinking. Inshallah. Inshallah. Um, think about something if you missed anything. I'm going to come to Zakaria. <laughs> Zakaria, short one. Um, this is a time for bonding, especially a lot of our um, young families or especially, you know, a lot of breaking down happening, a lot of divorce and all that stuff. Or big families probably, they're not bonded like we hoping to have. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not like a Muslim community, like old days, like mm -hmm. we back home, we were living together, even if it's a bread, we to share it. Mashallah, mm -hmm. it's still good. You know, you share the food with your family and mm -hmm. it's fantastic. Right. Yep. But now it's different. It's more, more modern. We, we go in separate ways. Some of our parents probably end up in the care homes. You know, this thing happening. So it's a month, everybody comes together for iftar exactly. and we do sahur together. It's a time to bonding again. It's an amazing way. It's a good mm. chance to do. What can we do to get you know everybody in, in the bonding again? How do we do that? How do we get us bonding strong? Mm. Oh. I think, like you said, naturally some of it happens anyway. Whether it's everything seems to revolve around food, but you know, <laughs> we'll say for iftar or like people going to the masjid for especially tarawih isha, we get a lot more people congregating in that sense, and naturally it happens i guess within ramadan everyone's mm. coming together anyway what we need to take further is uh, if it's happening in ramadan how do we continue it for the rest of the year how do we continue it and so on so <coughs> it's not just in ramadan that the families get together for iftar but we can how do we make it something more regular and then it won't be so kind of unusual for us and in terms of how to do that I think understanding is a key point, that understanding the value of 
a family or a community and why we need to be together. W if we can truly understand that and we understand, we can see the benefits of it, then why would you want any other way, I guess? So what can we do for our parents? Imagine a lot of our parents actually, they're cooking for us, mm -hmm. they're getting dressed clothes for us and they eat and everything. Or they're mashallah, doing amazing stuff, mm -hmm. parents. They always do it. Mm -hmm. um, what can we do for them? You know, they need to feel proud as well. Yeah. We're not just we feeling proud. We, if we don't do anything, if we don't mm -hmm. give something in return, they will love us always. Yeah. But from our side, how do mm -hmm. we return them with some kind of, I don't know, what shall we do? From, I think it's the smallest things. It's, it's literally the smallest things that can make the biggest differences. You know, when someone, we're busy at home, maybe we're on the computer, we're revising, whatever it may be, our mom always calls us, come down, come down, come down, and then maybe the 10th time, the 12th time, then we finally come down. If we went down the first time, it's ve Subhanallah. It, it seems very small, but if we did that, and then we continue to do that, our relationship would change with our parents so much so. And then if you go the step further, where before someone calls you, you're there helping them, that's, that's a world of difference, I think. Yeah. Oh, you know, a little thing like you said before, yeah. even if you can make a tea for them, exactly. honestly, little things, or it's give her a hand probably in the hoover. Well, how long does it take? It. Subhanallah. Mm. It's, it changes the whole thing. You're all not breaking pictures. the bank. You're not, it, it, it's not like you need to buy anything, you know, I remember, you know, like uh, one of my friends, actually, Aziz, he will call mm. me, Abdul Aziz, he will call me at uh, um, 11 and say, are you having your tea? Because I told him, especially at 11 o'clock, when I'm, my second son, he will make tea for everybody. Mm. That's his duty. Mm. And he will do the Hoover as well. <laughs> um, so he, he makes a good tea, though. Mm. Honestly, he makes <laughs> a good tea. <laughs> my wife and me actually wait for his tea. Okay. Wait for his tea. He will get, even if he's sleeping, we'll get up and... Uh, do you want a tea? Do you want a tea? And he will make it. He makes a good tea. So even little things, honestly, yeah, exactly. if we mm. can do it, and it makes the difference. Um, we don't have much time left, mashallah. Uh, it's, it's a sad news. We're going to have to go. Um, can I ask Louis? Mm. Imagine you were the last person in the world, you're a Muslim, and billions of people in front of you. Mm -hmm. And you want to talk about Allah. That's the only way you will survive. That's the key to the Jannah. Mm. It is key to the Jannah, no, to be honest. Mm. What would you say to them? <sighs> so, so, that's, that's a big question. Um, I think that the main thing is to, is to make them realise that these, you know, if you ask, the, especially the person who's an atheist, that you, do you, did you come from nothing? Or was you created by something? You have to remind them that there's a bigger purpose to this life. If you take people out of the rat race, out of this concrete jungle and you put them into the reality of the world and you reflect and you look into the universe that Allah, you know, Allah says in the Quran that He gives you ayat, He gives you signs and things that you can observe and you look at the stars and the moons, who can deny? Allah says in the Quran, فَبِأَيَّ Which of the favours and bounties of your Lord do you deny? We can't. You can't. And actually no one does actually. If you ask Him, the benefits of your eyes, He will say, I oh, know it is. Just because mm. you don't see mm. it, it doesn't mm. mean it's not there. No, of yeah. course. That's the thing. Everything around you, your left, mm. who owes this, the, Mr. Finger down mm. this one, mm. Mr. Finger down this one, Mr. Finger down that. Everything you see, yeah. you can't even, even if you say, no, it's no one done it, he would not believe it. Mm. Just because you can't see it, mm. because God is not with his creation. Mm. Mm. You make a mobile. You know, part of, this is my, you know, you're not inside <laughs> this one. You're outside. So God has created the universe. He's not within the universe. Mm. He's outside the universe. Mm. If he's part of the system, then who controls who? Exactly. No, of course. Subhanallah. So, I know it's, it sounds easy, but for billions and millions of people, actually, they have discussions in their head that how do we, is there anything there? Mm -hmm. well, this is the thing. The, the, the people always go to a discussion which is off topic. You know, why is there this happening in the world? You know, why are people doing this? Why are people doing that? This is, this is, this is after. The first discussion, question A, is does God exist, yes or no? SubhanAllah. So yeah. I'll leave that with you, mashallah. God, does God exist, mashallah, of course. Your last, we've got a few seconds left. Just your last word to our viewers. I think um, in terms of for Ramadan, just beginning to prepare now, inshallah, in terms of how we're going to mentally prepare and also physically with our health, how should we have the best diets? You know, we spoke about iftar, mm. planning them carefully, inshallah. Louis, in a few seconds, just the last word. Um, I, I would say that, you know, we know that this is a month when the, the Quran was revealed to us. 
Now, if there's uh, someone in your community, locally to you, that has never been had touch with the Quran, make it your opportunity to reveal it to them, inshallah. And so I'll leave it upon them. MashaAllah. Wa aziz. Jazakumullah khairan for you, both of you brothers, for making time for us. Dear brothers and sisters, uh, we don't have much time left. I wish we had more time. This, let's make this Ramadan a special Ramadan. Let's mm -hmm. plan the uh, things we talked about. If we'd made any mistake, please do forgive us. We're just trying to, you know, get the um, things moving for Ramadan, inshallah. It's a month of Ramadan and it's a special month because this Quran was revealed. So let's learn Quran with the meanings, of course, and let's challenge ourselves that we can be a better human being, inshallah. Aziz. So please forgive us if you said anything wrong. And I will hope to see you, inshallah, next time. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.